Hey, I'm Daniel, and you're watching an episode of my podcast, The Film Craziest Show, on YouTube. For this conversation, I was able to speak with Ryan Zaragoza, the director of the new film Madres, one of four films in the this year's Welcome to Blumhouse lineup, which is now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Madres is the story of a Mexican-American couple who moved to a migrant farming community in 1970s California as they're expecting their first child. Once they get there, strange symptoms and terrifying visions threaten their family. I was also able to interview Ariana Guerra for the film who plays Diana in the film. Check my channel for that interview. Right, so right now, thank you for watching this interview with Ryan Zaragoza, the director of Madres. So let's get right into it. Now, now to start, I just, I'd love to ask, what, what drew you to the directing this script? Yeah, so um, I think when I first read the script, the there's a few things that really drew me to the story. Um, one of them being that it's based on a real life horrific event that happened. And I wanted to, um, as somebody who's like, tries to stay informed, especially about things that affect my community. Um, I didn't know about this. And so I saw a real opportunity to help give voice to people who uh, face something really horrific and tragic and, um, you know, shed, shed some light on it. And also, uh, it was a horror film that takes place in the 70s, which I love 70s horror filmmaking. And I think that it gave me a chance to hopefully create something that feels like it was made at the tail end of the 70s. So I contribute to like the style and the visual language that those directors were using at the time. And um, also to explore some um, thoughts and ideas about uh, my culture. And I think hopefully universally, like the idea of fitting in and, and um, cultural identity and, and, and where you belong in, in this world. Okay, fair enough. And with the style of the film and just it being set in the seventies, is there a different approach to that? in style? Yeah, so the 70s, I think, was the pinnacle of, like, intricate blocking, um, sure. camera work, work that is elegant and meaningful and helps contribute to the emotion of a scene. And there wasn't a strong reliance on cuts to communicate something. It was more about how you can use the camera as a character and how you can place characters and actors and give them blocking that means something emotionally, um, dramatically to, to any given scene. And that's, that's something that I uh, was just gifted with uh, the ability to research and just dive fully into and um, you know, give nods here and there to my favorite, my favorite scenes, my favorite directors, but also create something new for, for our film. And what was it like, just the production design and the, the, the costumes of the 70s? What was it like trying to capture that era? Oh, it was amazing. So uh, Yulin, who did our, our costume design, uh, that, that dress that uh, Diana wears, which I think is incredibly gorgeous, she made that from scratch. She just went all out and she put all of her passion and her skill and talent into creating the wardrobe for that time. And uh, it really shows. And we got to do some fun things where it was important for me to play with the colors of their outfits and develop them over the course of the narrative. So they start out in cooler tones that symbolize the more American aspect of their lives. And Beto leans a little bit more towards warmer. And he quickly adopts into warmer tones to represent the community that they're coming from. And uh, Diana takes her time and like as her character like slowly starts to accept uh, her culture, um, so does her wardrobe. And uh, Owl, our uh, production designer, he did a great job. I mean, we created um, a very unique to our story aesthetic for the, um, the flyers that we did, which were based on like Zapatista flyers and um, you know, the, the music box that we did, everything that we, uh, like the, even to the wallpaper, like the wallpaper on the walls, he just like gave it such a nice textural feel that really contributed to the, the mood of the, the film. Okay, can we, can we talk about that music box and how, how cool is it for you to have a, a music box, a creepy music box in one of your films? <laughs> 
Yeah, so the music box was great. I mean, it's it's based on some like, you know, older um, homemade music boxes and it has like a Mexican print on it that I thought came out beautifully. But one of the coolest things is that I worked with my composers very early on to establish a theme. And so we were able to implement the actual theme of the film into the music box. So that lullaby theme is the, it's a completely original music box that plays the theme of the film. And it was just like such a great asset to have on set to get people in the mood and to hear what they're going to hear when we get to the finished product. Oh, that's awesome. Was, did it malfunction at all? Because that sounds very technical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a, uh, it was a, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get it. Fortunately, it didn't malfunction on the day or anything, but um, it was a scramble to see if we could make it work. We talked with a bunch of different manufacturers. We were trying to find the right type of music box that would play the, the notes that we needed and like how rustic it, it should feel, how time period specific it should be. And uh, fortunately, I was around like a great team to help me. Um, you know, really fine tune and be accurate to all those things. Okay. It feels like it's extra, like, I don't know if it'd be extra horrifying, but like just in the finished product, it's so creepy in a horror movie. So I don't know if that was the vibe on set too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we would play it, it definitely had like an arresting feeling to the set. And so in general, most of the time, our cast and crew were like really, we were happy about what we were making and um, everybody was really excited to be telling this type of story. Um, but there was definitely like when we would play that music box that gave the right creepy tone that everybody got a sense of like, oh, okay, this is, this is where we're headed. <laughs> okay, very right, cool. Now I think I've asked enough about the music box. So I'd also love to ask just what, what were the fake eyeballs made out of? Um, so they were, supposed to be cow eyeballs, but it was like a, it was a combination of a few things. We had um, some really interesting prop work done on those where uh, there were like glass eyeballs that were surrounded in like a texture that also, that came from like the idea of cow eyeballs, like the socket and everything. And it was, yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of gross, but it was great. <laughs> that sounds fun to play with, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> now, I'd love to ask, just because this is your first um, feature film, a directing, so what did you learn about yourself as a filmmaker on this project? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I think the things that I learned have to do with the types of stories and the way that I want to tell them. Uh, the film kind of evolved organically as we were making it. And a lot of that would go into like conversations that we would have on set between myself and the other, the actors and the cinematographer. And we would um, have these like in-depth conversa conversations and discover new things about the characters and the moments. And uh, it was important for me to give them the freedom to you know, if something felt odd to them to discuss why, and then we would figure out how to fix that and how to um, craft the story around our thing. So the film always felt alive as we were making it. Okay. Do That's you, something I'd like to continue. Okay, cool. Do you, do you feel yourself, um, do you feel like you're more like a, focused on the technical side of filmmaking or more on being like an actor's director? Um, that's a, I think it's, a combination of both for me. I mean, that would be the ultimate goal is that I can do both. I think I started out as more of like an actor's director and I recognized that I wanted to develop my technical understanding of how to use the camera and how to communicate uh, visually, audibly, just like use all the tools of cinema to um, give the audience a sense of, of what the character is experiencing. And so, now um, I'm hoping that I can continue to combine those and use not only um, the way that I work with my actors, but also the way that I use the technical side of filmmaking to create something that's uh, new and fresh and, and feels um, like, like one thing as opposed to two separate. 
Okay, cool. I, I don't, I think I have time for one or two more. So I just, I need to ask just uh, I, on the kind of on the technical side, I love how you play with sound in the film, because when I was screening it, uh, I was home alone and I hear in my headphones just something like a door opening and I was like, I'm about to die. And then I kind of <laughs> reround the film. So just, I just, I'd love to ask just like, what was it like playing with the sound in the film and, and kind of getting that aspect? That's cool that you had that experience. It makes me happy. Um, I am such a huge fan of sound. Sound is like such a big, important thing for me. And in every film that I want to make, I want to be creative with it. And I want to find new and innovative ways to tell a story and, and communicate emotion and fear or excitement or whatever it is uh, with the use of sound. And I think that's um, something that the filmmaking community in general can can uh, adopt because I, I personally love hearing what it feels like to be in a place. Okay, great. And I think my, my wrap up one would be, what do you want people to take away from this film? Um, I would love for people to walk away from this film wanting to discuss it, wanting to, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you are interested in the, the real life horror that's behind it, um, if it gets you talking, then I'm happy. I'm just, you know, that's, it's what I've always loved about cinema. And I think, you know, it, the ability to walk away from something and to have a conversation immediately following, um, is one of the beautiful things about the thing that we do. Okay, great. And hopefully have conversations like this one. So, so Ryan Zaragoza, director of Madres, thank you very much for chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. I appreciate you taking the time. Great. Thank you, Daniel.